all to our PES brand. It's kind of meta, right, that we're in a situation where you have a video game about a sport that is now an eSport. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> and um, you can definitely, our fans can definitely be excited for more eSports news um, moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I would assume that there's going to be community announcements and to foster an eSport, uh, you really have to be community minded. So what, what have you kind of put into the game or what are you thinking about uh, for your roadmap that you think you could really roll out uh, an eSports scene? We are definitely put it this way. In the background, we are working on our plans. They are, they are final. Sure. We will announce them in the next couple of months. But um, all I can say is when you look back to the past, especially last year, we had um, our PES League competition, which is a competition for the wider audience. So me, you guys, you can join the competition. You can qualify for the World Finals. But then on the other side, we also have our competition called eFootball Pro. So that's obviously there's a little link to it. And eFootball Pro is a competition which is for professional football clubs. So you have clubs such as Barcelona, Celtic or Monaco playing in that competition and playing against each other for the big title. So that's those two, turn, uh, those two competitions are obviously just the start of very exciting eSports projects. You know, uh, another sports game that I think you probably could look to for inspiration or maybe for what they're doing wrong is NBA 2K League. Uh, have you thought about uh, deeper partnerships with different leagues or, or teams like you had mentioned? Um, we are doing this already. Okay. So um, besides obviously working together very closely with our partner clubs, we are also working together with the leagues. So for example, just two weeks ago, we did in Russia, we did the Cyber League. So all the teams, all the Russian football clubs from, from the Premier League, from the top league, they competed against each other to play for the Russian championship, for the mm -hmm. Russian, Russian winner. And that's definitely something we are exploring more and more in the future. You know, I think a, a challenging thing, like I mentioned, for a year-to-year -year kind of game is uh, the, the game changes sometimes. You guys introduce gameplay elements, remove things, change things around. Sometimes you flip around the lob pass button and the pass button just to annoy me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, how do you think about going forward, especially with your esports initiative, uh, making the game transition from year to year as, as uh, helpfully as possible for your, your core fan player base? Um, I think, um, first of all, I, I agree with you what you're just saying, that obviously if you, if you release a game on an annual basis, it's difficult, I mean, to, to add new elements to it. But I would say this year with, with the new PES, we've added loads of gameplay elements to the game, which um, our esports players, players, but also our normal PES fans, they can definitely look forward to it. And those gameplay elements will have a huge impact on how certain esports athletes will play the game in the bigger competitions. I've already received messages from certain players who actually asked me, when can I come to the office or can I play the game? I really want to see it. I really want to look forward to it. And that's, for us, the perfect sign that this game will be really, really big this year. And I think another really important thing... Uh for any esport, any game, is that it needs to be easy to pick up and play. Have you guys done anything in the recent years or even with this version that you think uh, can help open it up to new players who might be who might see promotion for your esports and say, okay, maybe I should get into this? I think like a, a game like Rocket League has is a good example of that, where it's really easy to enter in, but it's very hard to master. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about like that onboarding? Have you thought about uh, expanding the player base? Yeah, I mean, I mean, first of all, I mean, in terms of like our esports plans, we cannot cannot go into detail because that will come come later in the next couple of months. But um, what I would say in terms of when you look at esports, what is really interesting and something where we just explored it or noticed it in the past is that co-op, for example, especially for football video titles, something we introduced last year. And co-op means that you will play with two other friends together. And this, especially when it comes down to offline events, this is something which has become really interesting because you have all the emotions, obviously, yeah. when someone is winning 
or um, obviously when they're losing it's something completely new which hasn't been there in the football video game uh, scene before so that's something from an esports point of view is really interesting but um, in terms of the gameplay we've added loads of new new features to the game we worked with Andres Iniesta he's um, Barcelona legend he's now playing in Tokyo our development team worked with him very, very closely to um, bring our gameplay forward he shared all his feedback all his football knowledge with our development team to tweak the gameplay here and there we've we've included a new dribbling feature which is called finesse dribble and this it's named after him because he's very well known for his dribbling dribbling skills and that's what, what we added to the game there are new modes coming to the game updated modes so there's huge amount of content for new you for current users but very importantly, as you said, also for new users so that we can introduce them to, to our product, to our brand, and actually can provide them with a wide portfolio of content. Yeah. I'm interested in hearing a bit more about your, the decision to rebrand because I imagine for, uh, for such a, a legendary known franchise as Pez, that had to be kind of a difficult decision, you know, thinking about how do we get the word out to players, our, our partners. Could you tell me more about what went into that decision and how you've, besides being here with Shack News, of course, how you've been uh, spreading the word? Um, I mean, first of all, that's been, I mean, as I said earlier, that obviously esports had a huge impact sure. for us. Um, we are present in the, in the world of esports for the last, obviously, we. I would say 10 years. We started small. We had those little tournaments in hotels somewhere. And for the last two, three years, we went actually bigger where we worked with our partner clubs. We hosted events at Barcelona, at Arsenal in their stadiums. And that's definitely the, the right direction where we want to work. We want to get bigger, work with all our partner clubs. And therefore, for us, esports is, is very important. And with this repositioning, with the change of the name, it is something, some sort of statement we want to make. However, the brand PES, the terminology PES, is still something we still want to keep since, right. as you said, it's a heritage. It's something, right. obviously, everyone, like I've been, I grew up with PES, with, with the brand. Same. And so, yeah. Yeah. so therefore, we still want to keep it in the, in the brand name and We've decided then to make a combination and call it eFootball Pass moving forward. That works. Uh, you know, I, I imagine it was kind of the right time too because coming up on another 10-year marker, PES 2020, that's a, that's a big deal for any uh, sports franchise. Yes, no, no, definitely. And I mean, even though it's PES 2020, obviously there are years to come. Um, next year we have our anniversary of the series in, in general. So it's definitely going to be 